Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. There has been movement on the renewable energy front this week, but there are concerns over supply chain pressures too. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss the situation. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. Government has initiated a new round of bidding for wind and solar. That's correct. This is the sixth bid window, which is now in the market, and uh, you can go about now procuring the documentation. Uh, this is not free to air, so you have to you have to buy the documentation, and you have to buy it for each project that you intend to bid for. So it's an expensive exercise. It's a game for the larger entities. These are large-scale projects. So we know that we've had five bid windows up to now. Four of them have been financially closed, and the projects are being built around 6,000 megawatts has been procured in total. We've got the fifth bid window now underway, uh, where we should by the end of April have financial close for those 25 projects. Um, and that was confirmed as still the deadline because we know we've seen shifting deadlines for uh, various projects, especially the risk mitigation independent power procurement program. That's been shifting, I think it's shifted officially three times now. Um, and also to the end of April, that is the, the, the word. But uh, so this is an important next step in the procurement of large scale renewables in South Africa. The six bid window in terms of the ministerial determinations that are aligned to the integrated resource plan will mean that another 1,600 megawatts of wind will be allocated for procurement and 1,000 megawatts of solar PV will be allocated for procurement and that they're looking really for these bids to be in uh, uh, by 11th of August and then we should then get into this period of rolling uh, renewable energy bidding so bid window 7, bid window 8, etc. Although there are gaps in the integrated resource plan, particularly around solar PV, and we know that we've got this huge backlog uh, in the electricity supply industry. So the fact that the RP hasn't been updated and the ministerial determinations which flow from that haven't been updated means that we could see gaps in future procurement for solar PV, which would be, uh, a, a, I suppose, a great pity and a great mistake. It has also reconfirmed the deadline for bid window five and announced a new deadline for the emergency procurement round. That's correct. Bid window five has been restated as the end of April. So we should see 25 projects theoretically signed on, on that date. Uh, and uh, with the, the risk mitigation round, they've also suggested the end of April to, for the conclusion of that. That was supposed to be initially signed all the way back in September last year, then January then the end of March, and then the end of March came and there was supposed to be a signing ceremony, and then there was a d delay again. So now the new date is the end of April, but we know that uh, one of the losing bidders took the process to court, lost that court case, but then recently got the right to appeal a part of that judgment. So we're not too sure, and it's not clear uh, whether the legal opinion has been fully taken as to whether that affects the whole program. We know that the president in his State of the Nation said that only 800 megawatts of the 2,000 megawatts would be ready to sign. So we expected that that would be the non-car power ship uh, projects because those were the ones that were subject of the court case. And there's also environmental authorizations that are outstanding there. But now it's not clear with uh, this right to appeal the judgment whether it knocks back all the projects. There was a number of wind, solar, battery, gas projects that were also part of that. Uh, very, very expensive because it was, uh, they sort of had to operate in a certain, almost a base load manner. So it's almost putting a, a square peg in a round hole. So some people think we should just dust off our sandals and move on. But it seems that uh, there seems to be a commitment to going ahead with at least part of the risk mitigation projects. And the new deadline is the end of April officially. Whether it remains official or not, we'll have to wait and see. There's also growing concern about the immediate outlook for renewables deployment owing to supply chain and pricing pressures. Yes, this is massive. And this is going to be what everyone watches at the end of April. These 25 projects that were bid last year, that were announced in October last year by uh, Mineral Resources and Energy Minister Gwede Mantash, and with very, very favorable pricing of around 47 cents across the wind and solar projects bid, it's very aggressive pricing. It's very low relative to what we've seen previously. Now they have to live up to those promises in a, in a context where we've seen massive 
energy price volatility across the board, you know, uh, not just in uh, oil and gas, it's coal, it's, you know, paraffin, we're seeing massive volatility and it's now uh, the contagion's affected renewable energy, there's no doubt. Wind and solar components are much more expensive than they were when those bids were put in. Uh, the supply of that has been massively disrupted. It's been amplified by the Russian invasion of Ukraine, as with all other energy market turmoil. Uh, the renewables market is being roiled by that as well. So all eyes will be on Pretoria at the end of April. Will all 25 bids sign? Will all 25 bids be able to honour uh, their commitments that they made when they made those offers last year or when they were selected? on the basis of those offers last year, uh, or will we see for the first time a large number fall by the wayside. This, this reverse auction style of South Africa, which we were very innovative and one of the first countries to introduce back in 2011, has genuinely served South Africa well. We've seen a continued falling of, of prices bid. Um, we've seen more and more, a lot of appetite when we've, when we've run the program. We obviously had that terrible seven year hiatus when we were told uh, in, without any evidence that we didn't need any more renewable energy because our coal fleet was stabilised. And we know what happened then. Uh, we've gone into much in, more intense load shedding since then. So we've, but generally projects have closed. Generally all the projects that have bid, we've had some wobblies around concentrated solar power project in bid window 3.5, but other than that, generally they've closed. But there's going to be a lot of interest to see whether the projects that was, uh, were announced back in October actually are able to sign the power purchase agreements and the associated agreements and get the finance that they need and the equipment that they need, meet the local content thresholds that are outlined in the bid documentation and actually close at the end of April. And if they don't, it is going to send shudders through that uh, auction system. And I think it, uh, th there's definitely a need I think a growing need to review some of the, the, the architecture around that auction system because this is not the only game in town for renewables. There's a lot of other games in town now with the 100 megawatt reform. We can see companies like Anglo-American wanting to go fully uh, renewable uh, over quite a short period. We can see the, the big projects coming out of co companies such as Sassel and a lot of the other mining companies. So this is no longer the only game in town. And is the architecture fit for purpose? And if we're wanting to do all the social development and economic development and enterprise development and local content associated with this, how are we going to reflect that in the tariffs bid? Are we going to allow for this continual race towards lower and lower bids? Or are we going to reflect and say we need to put in uh, these social components and these local components, but we're going to have to pay for them? And maybe it's acceptable as South Africa to do that. Otherwise, we, if we don't do that, I think then we must allow the, the developers to source the cheapest components, do possibly less uh, social responsibility or social community upliftment around their projects and just get the energy in the system. So it's a, it's a policy choice and we need to make it and it needs to be reflected in that architecture. It can't be business as usual. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.